What would you say have been like your the highest point of the type of career, like your best memories? Dynamo or? Festival '95. Uh, yeah, the big one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we didn't headline it. Paradise Lost it, but we yeah. we had the crowd. It was yeah. it was amazing. 150,000 people. '97 too. Nine, was it '97? We did we did two Dynamo so Yeah. '97 wasn't as. Uh, no, the it Dynamo Festival intense. itself wasn't yeah. as big then, yeah. Yeah. but 95 was huge, you know, and I remember I had my wife out there, Johnny has his wife out there, and, and uh, I just That's remember a sea of heads into the horizon, and Peter had this idea, you know, let's go outside, you know. Let's hit one chord and say good night and walk off stage. I love that. That's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> And for 10 minutes, we didn't go back on stage. It was great. It was a great show. And, you know, definitely the high point of my career, you know, where I was going all over the world, making all kinds of money. You know, couldn't beat it. You really weren't making money, though. Yeah, yeah you had some fun. Like, last time we spoke together, you told me some crazy story about the Panther right? so you were like, like with a squid and, and, oh, yeah, oh, squid? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> that was the strangest thing I've ever seen thrown on stage. Yeah, a whole, a whole squid. <laughs> And then Dimebag cut, up, cut the squid up and he was stuffing it in my boots while I was playing. Like <laughs> and then the squid was getting thrown all over the audience and the squid got mashed into all the gear, including Pantera's gear, so everything stunk of dead squid for the rest of the time. So they, all the techs, Grady and everyone, were freaking... And we, both bands were a nightmare for everyone that worked for us. <laughs> it was so, it was something happened every night. I mean, it just escalated. It started with me and Peter walking out on stage with a cafeteria table filled with cold cuts and, 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 and uh, boiled eggs and stuff while they were playing in the middle of their set and just throwing shit at them. <laughs> I saw Phil Insamo, just as he was turning his head and singing, Peter throw a red onion. And the red onion, Phil turned around, opened his mouth, and the red onion stuck straight in his mouth. <laughs> 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 oh man, it was insane. It was insane. Yeah, yes, it was. Because they were wise asses, and we were equal wise asses. You know, they, I don't think they'd ever toured with anybody that was, you know, equal jerk offs as them. You know, and like we just went right in for it with them. They had the money to pull off the pranks, though. We uh, didn't have the money. Then. <laughs> it like it. It just it became a contest, you know, and it just it, it just ended with. 500 rolls of toilet paper, toilet paper up to their waists, their instruments going down, nothing but feedback, and just us running across stage tackling each other. This is an arena. <laughs> they played three songs, I think. <laughs> Finally, Vinny just said, fuck it, threw his drums over, joined in. We were squeezing a bottle of ketchup in fucking Dime's eyes and screaming, ah! <laughs> Pantera got banned from that venue for like three years. Three years here, because I was in yeah. Vegas. Yeah, yeah. play there anymore. <laughs> but they were just goof offs and wise asses, and so were we. It's just like kind of hey, jerk off some Brooklyn and jerk off some Texas, man. <laughs> <laughs> but we had known them for many years before that. I mean, the first person I met from that crew, me and Johnny, was actually Rita and um, Kurt Winston. I would like to put like a um, like a typo recap of all the, the records you've made, like with some of your opinion on it, you know, with the distance. You want me to criticize my own work? <coughs> I see. Yeah, but just small, you know, like couple of comments, you know. Well, okay, you yeah, yeah, comments sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like slow, deep, and hard. Okay. One, yeah. Slow, deep, and hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite record. Okay, okay. And the origin of the faces. I think it's light, but I think it's fake light, but. It's always been said it's fake. Uh, yeah, like it's like fake. It yeah. was made in Josh's base. So, yeah. consider it as a studio record or? Um, uh, great. <laughs> it's a great record. And so, like, the groundbreaking Bloody Kisses? Uh, I, I would say groundbreaking. And uh, October was when this gentleman behind came in the picture. Failed experiment. <laughs> There's great songs on it. It's yeah. funny you think of it that way because, like, I, it's one of my. I know you don't, but it, I was there. I watched our. I watched us sell half the records that we sold with Bloody Kisses. You know, I know a lot of and what irks people is a lot of the fans that have, with Typo retained. That's their favorite record. I understand why, and some of my favorite Typo record songs are on that record. But the band, I mean, it was ballsy. You know, we took it from this eclectic, you know, uh, mix of uh, we started as an industrial hardcore goth dirge band and you know we, we took it from all those elements and then he just went 
more in the direction of like a sexy gothic approach. Yeah. And uh, it was ballsy, but that was the decline, the beginning of the decline for Typo yeah. Negative. I mean, we had sold half a million yeah. records, Blood of Kisses. Yeah. We didn't even reach 200,000. I think you gotta look at the times too, with the whole... No, it wasn't there yet. We were still, no, we had still yeah. gotten, it was, didn't happen yet. That did not go down yet. October Rust eventually went gold. Yeah. yeah. But Which is okay, you know? You just, you just watch, it, it, like some, yeah. some of the, uh, some of the air came out of the sales. It did. Uh, we lost, you know what it is? We had like a wider appeal before that. You know, we got beer drinking, construction boot wearing, you know, um, Midwestern slobs that like the band, and also Czechs, you know. And then when that record came out, you know, it, it was a lot of Czechs, <laughs> but not enough. <laughs> and since you did so, I guess you know what it is. My opinion is biased because I resent the record because of that. Yeah, you know. I guess. Uh, but since you developed like October Rust, can you go back to Bloody Kisses maybe a bit more than just saying ground breaking? <laughs> All right. Um. It's a groundbreaking record, but it wasn't as honest and raw as um So Deep and How. Yeah, that was the most honest thing Peter ever wrote. He didn't admit it to. You know, and I guess from an artist standpoint of view, to me that's what I value most. I mean there was definitely a lot of imagination, a lot of brilliant parts and brilliant songs on Bloody Kisses. But it was also Blood just a, fire, technically it was a mess. Blood and Fire not being one of them. Blood and Fire not being <laughs> Peter always wrote, you know, there was always one of those songs. You know, when he got romantic, his idea of romantic was, you know, Blood Fire and Small Animal Sacrifice. <laughs> okay, and so then you get like World Coming Down after October Rest. World Coming Down was an artistically honest and brilliant <coughs> record that just Underrated. was way too large of a pill for the average fan to swallow, you know. So, I, although I knew at the time that that's how, I mean, it's great songs, it's great, great melodies on that record. But I knew at the time, even at the time before it was complete, completed, I knew it was a great record and artistically true, but I knew it was going to help the man, you know, which it did. The man just, then, you know, file sharing came in just when, you know, we were writing the slowest, dirgiest record on earth. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. And, and then you got the uh, Life is Kidding Me? Um, probably my least, one of my least favorite mm. type of records. You know, and being so close to it, this is why you can't criticize yourself either. I mean, that was, just, that was the hardest time for this band. Peter was going through such physical insanity. You know, it was definitely, was that the hardest right, uh, record to write, or was it Life is Killing Me? Uh, that record, it was, it was, it was fragmented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He you didn't know? put much thought into it. He was, he couldn't keep a lady, I thought. You know, so it was like, you know, struggling in the studio with him for months and months and months and months. But I think it was like, I don't know, it seemed like the record that everybody seemed the least enthused about, like, you know, cared the least about. As but there was as, some like, great know, songs on it. There were some great songs on it that definitely validated for yeah. it to be a part of the catalog. Yeah. You know, like Anesthesia is a brilliant song. Yeah. We played it live right yeah. to the end. The, yeah, the minute, the minute the record, the minute that song was recorded and, and stuff, it became a mainstay in the live set. Yeah. So just th just for that song alone, validates it. Yeah. Every I mean, single title of record has us. At least two or three songs like that. Hmm. Like there's, but there's a lot of stuff on the record that I couldn't identify with. Like I couldn't, I couldn't connect with a lot of it. You know, Peter had this funny way of breaking my balls. So. Like the song "Life Is Killing Me," the chorus. This is how he would react. You know, if I, if you were to critique him, I'd be like, Peter, the melody is not one of the best melodies you've ever written. You should do something with it. You know what you did with it? So it's out of my range, you sing it. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up singing the chorus. And then again, what was the other song? All Hallows Eve. All Hallows, Hallows Eve. Eve. We're Hallows like, Hallows. I'm looking at Josh and Mark. His lyrics, he's what is he writing a bee spider webbed and glazed in frost? What is he talking about? We gotta talk to him, we gotta talk to him. Peter, I think you can write better lyrics than this. <laughs> who, you, who ended up singing the song? Me. He, but he would get it's upset. It's out of my range, you sing it. He, he would get upset, like, you know, if you criticized his lyrics, yeah. and then, like, you know, 
that was his way of like you know getting back. He hated <laughs> writing lyrics, so he'd wait. To, dude, he'd wait to the we'd be in the studio tracking vocals. I got to she'd be shitting in the bathroom what, with Chinese food, with a, with a bag of Chinese food, writing the lyrics for the song. <laughs> Ten minutes before he's got to track. <laughs> That's what he would do. How he about, he had, write. I mean, I could also see why. You know, I mean, he had such a long catalog in Korea from Carnivore on. I mean. You write 500 songs. I mean, you're gonna run out of shit to talk about, you know, sooner or later, right? Yeah. But he always, I mean, th th I always try to push him to talk about shit because he had such an insane life. There's plenty of material. Uh, that's what life is killing me. Um, no, life is killing me. That again. No, that again. No, that again. Yeah, that's one. World, world, world Coming Down was the one I really, I really pushed him. I said, Peter, all the shit that's going on with us, me and him, I was going to sink our crap. Just write about that. That was Peter's least favorite album. Okay. And so then you got to because it made him, you know, it was it was more it was more introspective, especially compared to you know the last the record before that, you know, yeah. before October Rust. Yeah. October Rust was fluff. You know yeah. what I mean? It was it was it was nice. It was you know it was very Happy. exuberant and you know basically he created it so he could get laid more, <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> That's one of the. See, in one way, it, record sales-wise, it was a failed experiment. But as far as Peter was concerned, it was a complete success. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was his favorite record. <laughs> <laughs> and so you got that again, which is to me the most solid musically record you've made. But that one, basically, me and Johnny, he was in such bad condition. Me and Johnny really had to work closely and hard with him in that same shithole studio. That was yeah. with, the, with the human shit on it. Because exactly. after we, we found the space for Seven Boys, so well, we, don't, we got the space in Rockaway, let's just use that. And we suffered in the studio for like nine months developing these records with him. And there was a Chinese food restaurant right down, down from it. What was the Chinese lady's name? Tina. Tina. <laughs> Hated Peter. He, knew, he tried to pick her up every time he <laughs> ate Chinese food, too. What do you do? You make all that noise up there, you big idiot! <laughs> we would play so loud. Because whether we were playing in a, in, a, in, a, in a stadium or in a room this size, the volumes were the same. And I guess the plaster was coming down on our rocks and stuff. And the studio kicked us out. They kicked us out. to another room across for the street. playing too room. loud. In the ghetto. <laughs> the record is really great to me. I mean, many people don't agree with me when I say it's like, it's, I think it might be my favorite type of record, actually. But it's a good uh, record. And, Definitely uh, is. Because to me, musically, is the more yeah, solid, like I said. Like if there was more, but the record, the way that record was developed was we had a very jam out approach. And like it was just me, yeah, but Johnny, back, like, and Josh. Yeah. It was way more jammy than that. You know, people come up with lift and we would just improvise. We'd improvise. Some of those songs were 20 minutes long. Yeah. I mean, it all had to be edited down in the end. Of course, Peter being the control freak, he was at all around and control and do this, right? So a lot of that jam, you know, freestyle stuff was lost. But it's definitely the most rock, rock and roll approached yeah, yeah, type of record. Long songs, band jams, mm -hmm. that it was great. One thing, you know, man, no matter what condition he was in, and you know, I want to reiterate, he was completely sober when he passed away, almost nine months. But no matter what condition the guy was in, the guy could write a riff. Yeah. Who remember his name? You give him his bass, there's something come out with him. Come out. Yeah, it was a natural. He, I came into the studio when you guys were in that other room, and Peter looks at me and he goes, Hey Matt, you ever see one of these? Chorus pedal. <laughs> 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 yeah, but that's weird because to me this recon sounds so much more it's Inspired and fresh than Life is Killing Me, for example. It was more inspired, yeah. and, you know, than Life is Killing Me. Life is Killing Me, he was, I don't know if he was worse or, I don't know. I, I think that um, he and Johnny brought a lot of, uh, a, a lot of element into um, Dead Again, and just all those months jamming those songs with him. And Jesus, he had nothing else to do, so the eight, rehearsal would last eight hours. Mm. Five to six days a week. Five to six days a week. So he had nowhere else else to go. And then you go home and he call you at two in the morning. You. Uh, you. Uh, come, come to my house right now. I'll, I want to fight you in the street now. <laughs> so wait a minute, Peter. You mean you, you want me to get in my car, 
pay eleven dollars for the bridge to meet you in front of your house to fight you? <laughs> yes. yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I told him. I said, "All right, I'll be there in forty-five minutes. If I'm not there, start without me." <laughs> and then he hung up and he called me. <laughs> I want to fight you now. <laughs> he went down the bin. <laughs> so we got the Josh. <laughs> Josh had it the worst though because they lived on the same street together. <laughs> <laughs> At least you don't have to pay the bridge, but <laughs> I, was I was twenty miles away from where people. Josh was. freaking out. I'm the one that lives next to him. I'm not gonna die for this man. <laughs> 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 but you know, it was only if he that, comes it was to my <laughs> house, I'm gonna shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you would say. You'd be like, don't make him upset. I live next door to him. And, to house. <laughs> and at that point, he wasn't even driving. We had to pick him up at his house. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Which way? I didn't have a problem with him. <clears throat> I loved him. I loved the guy. He was, just, he, was just a, he was a brilliant lunatic. 